This is Finished Work TV, a place of inspiration, wisdom, and revelation. As you listen and receive God's Word today, your life will never remain the same. Relationship. There is how you approach conversation. There is how you approach situation. And there is how you approach the things that happen around you because you have the knowledge of your identity. He said, yeah, he said, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood. Now, when you see a born again Christian, this person is born again and she has a problem or he has a problem. And you see him going to patronize witchcraft. You say, leave him alone. Nobody just talk. Nobody talk. We don't hear talk where we and not be preaching no. not preaching but the preaching has to be in line with the word that will change your situation what you hear matters I was telling Daniel this evening I said I thank God I had good word on time when I was coming up I had good word on time that was what saved me what saved me was I had good word I have friends they didn't hear the good word it's now they want to hear it and when you hear something that it has time for it to work, there is a process to it. You cannot just have the, the, the revelation right now and it start working. You have to do application. I had good word on time. I knew who I am in Christ. So when people come and tell me, ah, your family people don't prosper, things are not working, I didn't believe that. That was not my thinking. I already know I'm a chosen generation. I am a priest with property. I already know because if you have no revelation of your identity negative experience of other people can be imposed on you because of the family where you came from they say look at your elder sister look at your younger sister look at your father look at your mother you know people want to show you experiences they want to show you what has happened to people around you but what they say we don't live by experience we live by the word of god if you don't have the revelation of your identity, the tendency of you going the way your father went is there. If you don't have the, the knowledge of who you are in Christ, you, you are going to be looking for help in all the wrong places. Because the person doesn't know who, who he or she is. Strong faith is built on the revelation of who we are in Christ Jesus. Strong faith. If your faith is going to be strong, if your faith is going to do great things, you must consistently have a revelation of your identity in Christ Jesus. Let me say this to you. The revelation of your identity in Christ Jesus is a progressive revelation. It's a progressive revelation that you will continue to hear about righteousness one message you must hear all the time most of is your righteousness your right standing with god that you have the right standing because as you do life there are situations circumstances things that will show up that can bring you to a place of guilt and condemnation but the revelation of your righteousness Pro will protect you from living in condemnation. Romans chapter 8, he said, therefore there is no more condemnation for those who are now in Christ Jesus who do not walk after the flesh. When you choose not to believe who you are in Christ, you're walking after the flesh. If you don't believe in your identity of who you are in Christ, you are walking after the flesh. The man that is walking after the spirit is the man who is walking in the consciousness of his righteousness. I am the righteousness of God. And your righteousness is the gift of God that was impacted into your human spirit. The day you got born again was the day you became righteous. But that may not be the day you start walking in the consciousness of your righteousness. To walk in the consciousness of your righteousness, your mind has to be renewed with God's word for you to know that you have the gift of righteousness. I am righteous, not because of what I did, but because of what Jesus did. 
I said, I am righteous not because of what I did, but because of what Jesus did. For you to have a strong faith, you must have a progressive teaching on the gift of righteousness. I am the righteousness of God. I am the righteousness of God. You don't have to feel it, you have to believe it. I said you don't have to feel it, you have to believe it. Because if you don't believe in your righteousness, it will be difficult for you to walk in the goodness of God. Hmm. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I said if you don't believe in your righteousness, it will be difficult for you to walk in the goodness of God. Those who walk in the goodness of God must have the knowledge of the gift of righteousness that was given to them. I am the righteousness of God. When you know you are the righteousness of God, you will know that God will hear your prayer. When I pray, God will hear my prayer. I am the righteousness of God. Righteousness means having a right standing with God. I said what? Righteousness means what? Having a right standing with God. R having a right standing with God. This right standing is based on the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and what he did through his finished work. So I have the gift of righteousness. You are not expected to condemn yourself and you are not expected to receive condemnation because condemnation weakens faith. One thing that weakens the faith of people is when they begin to live in condemnation. I am not worthy. I'm not qualified. I'm not capable. You know, there are common people use, I'm not worthy. I'm not worthy. No, Jesus made you worthy. That is why we have the gift of righteousness. The lamb, worthy is the lamb. You were not worthy, but the lamb was worthy that I made you worthy. Worthy is the lamb that was slain for you. The lamb was slain for you to live the God life. Without the revelation of your identity in Christ Jesus, you'll be settling for things you shouldn't have settled for. I need to know who I am in Christ for me to manifest the purpose of God for my life. I need to know who I am in Christ for me to see possibility. Because when you know who you are in Christ, you know you can prosper anywhere. They say this place, nothing the work. I say it will work for me. I'm the righteousness of God. I've done come here. I will prosper. The righteousness of God is here. The righteousness of God prospers. The righteousness of God excels. The righteousness of God breaks forth. The righteousness of God enjoys divine favor. The righteousness of God operates from the realm of rest. I am the righteousness of God. I am a partaker of the divine nature. You have to walk in the consciousness of the gift of righteousness if you're going to manifest the goodness of God. I am the righteousness of God. You must say that to yourself. Even in the day you, you messed up things, it's a crazy day, you did some stupid things, you did some crazy things, that day was a bad day for you, declare, I am the righteousness of God. If you can walk in the consciousness of your righteousness, you can come out of any situation. I am the righteousness of God. The consciousness of the gift of righteousness that we have received in Christ Jesus is one of the things that strengthens our faith. You cannot say, I don't know whether life will work out for me. Oh. I don't know whether I'm going to succeed in life. Oh. I don't know if anybody is going to help me. Oh. No, I have the gift of righteousness. I will have help. The gift of righteousness is God helping me first. <laughs> huh? The gift of righteousness is the help God has extended to me to have a right standing with him as I can manifest his will. I have right standing with God. I have right standing with God. I'm not looking for anybody that will go before God on my behalf. I'm not looking for anybody. I'm not looking for anybody that will say, I better go and talk to God on my behalf. No, me, I will talk to God by myself. Why? I have right standing with God. I'm not looking for somebody that will prophesy to me and tell me about my future. Me, I have right standing with God. I'm hearing from God. If you don't have a revelation of your identity, you'll be subject to spiritual abuse. One of the reasons why a lot of people abuse spiritually, they don't know who they are. 
They ring bell now, bang I. That woman, they see vision. All of them don't gather. This is my life. Eh? Me didn't see vision for me now. I don't know. This is my life. Since this year starts, nothing they walk. Since this year starts, nothing they move. Nothing they move. Check your thoughts. Check your talk. Check your thoughts life. And check what you say. Nothing they move. What kind of mindset do you have? Things don't just move. <laughs> Things move on instruction and obedience. If you want to see money, there are things that bring it. That are a different matter. I didn't come for that one. We were in a meeting here yesterday. Why the man of God was leading prayer. And the Spirit of God gave me an instruction. I just responded. It was not up to one hour. Another person got an instruction from God on how to minister to me. The thing was happening. It's by instruction and obedience. This is a walking. And that is why it's important for you to hear from God. A lot of people, like I was telling a dear friend, are not even in the place where they can hear. Because hearing from God is the first step to financial prosperity. The first step to financial prosperity or to supernatural prosperity or to wealth transfer is hearing from God. He will bring an instruction then ex demands obedience. Let me not use the word demand obedience. Expect obedience. I don't want to use the word demand obedience. God will bring an instruction your way and then expect you to obey the instruction. There are things you want to see. There will be an instruction coming your way. And obedience that you need to carry out. That's how things will work. So when people say things are not working, they should check how they think. They should check how they look at things. And they should check how they carry themselves. It's very important. You check how you think. You check what you say. You check how you carry yourself. You can fight against yourself unknowing to you. Yes. Somebody can be fighting himself. Unknowing to them. They don't know how to trigger the favor of God. There are people God wants to be nice to them. And you're nice to them, they're they are now wondering, what does he want from me? They don't believe that you can be nice to them. There are people like you're nice to them, they're thinking something else. They don't even know that it is the will of God for people to be nice to us. It is God's will for you to walk in his goodness. It is God's will for you to walk in favor. It is God's will for you to walk in preferential treatment. It is God's will for you to have supernatural help. It is the will of God for you to succeed with your life. It is God's will for you to excel. God wants you to excel. God wants you to do well. So we have received the gift of righteousness. I am the righteousness of God. I need to tell myself that over and over. Faith man, you are the righteousness of God. Faith man, God loves you. You are the object of his affection. He loves you. He cares for you. He has a plan for your life. Let's go back to the first scripture we read. First Peter chapter 2 verse 9. We're teaching on the foundation of strong faith. That's the title of this message this evening. How many of us know that we need to walk in faith to do the things we're supposed to do? You want to build a house, it's going to be by faith. You want to buy a car, by faith. You want to get your body healed, by faith. You want to do a business, by faith. You want to move from one level to the other, by faith. You want to start a new career, by faith. The scripture said, they just shall live by faith. This is how they just live. They live by faith. And it is by faith we unlock the will of God. It is by faith we connect with the purpose of God. It is by faith we break grounds. It is by faith we start seeing possibility and we start producing uncommon results. It is by faith. He said the church shall live by faith. That's how the church is going to live. It is by faith you say to yourself, I'm buying that house they say. It is by faith you say to yourself, see, it is by faith we declare the will of God. 
It is by faith we declare the goodness of God in the midst of famine, toil, and hardship, and hard labor. We we'll begin to declare the goodness of God. It is by faith we have the declaration. I will prosper and it will show. It's by faith. We'll prosper and it will show. We'll prosper and it will show. It is by faith you begin to declare that. It is by faith you begin to declare to your body, body, you will heal. I begin to recover in my body. Body, you're healed. You've been on drugs for a very long time, but you can expect to be healed by God's word. You can expect to be healed. There is some minority sometimes who can be passive towards God's word. I shared that experience. It was like, uh, what is it like last year? And I just noticed this experience that my head, I have this severe pain, and it's just like my head was banging bam like that i was just having that kind of pain but i didn't want to share with anybody and this then continued for close to a week and i wasn't saying anything to the situation let me say this to you if you're not speaking god's word god is silent concerning the situation but when you start speaking god gets involved hmm. if you're quiet he's quiet too if you're not speaking the word of God over a situation, that is, he, he can't do anything. God walks through your word. Faith is released by speaking. So if you're not speaking, you're not releasing faith. Faith is released by speaking. How do you release your faith? You release your faith by speaking the word of God. I was also sharing with someone yesterday, dear friend, I said, one of the ways we release our faith again is by our giving. We we'll release our faith by speaking the word. We we'll release our faith by giving. That is how we release our faith. Man, I started speaking to that situation. I started talking to that situation. You must learn to talk to your body. You must learn to talk to your checkbook. You must learn to talk to your marriage. You must learn to talk to your future. You must learn to talk to your career. You must learn to talk to the destinies of your children. You must learn to speak into your future. You must learn to see what God can do. A strong faith will emanate from the revelation of our identity in Christ Jesus. First Samuel 17. You read about David. When David stood before Goliath, what he saw was possibility. When he stood before Goliath, the armies of Israel lack the revelation knowledge of their own identity. They lack the knowledge of the covenant, the Abrahamic covenant that was in their favor. They never knew there is an Abrahamic covenant that God has honored. But it has to take a man that has the revelation of his own identity to acknowledge the Abrahamic covenant and say to Goliath, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that wants to stand before the armies of the living God? Even the armies doesn't know that the armies of the living God. It takes revelation to make a discovery of your true identity. If you don't know who you are, you will live a life below your destiny. If you don't know who you are, God has given you everything you need to make your life work. But it's your choice to walk it. Everything that will make your life to walk and be successful has been settled more than 2,000 years ago. Everything that will make you succeed, everything that will make you excel and produce good results was settled more than 2,000 years ago. Let's take, for instance, it's your birthday. And we decided to show you uh, kindness, goodness and love and we just came together and we put together oh let's just say we're in the neighborhood of 10 million naira and we went we went out to bought a car it's a birthday and we want to smile at you and we bought a car maybe we'll come to your house or to your office or maybe it's in church we just park the car out there Happy birthday to you, you know, like that. We just said everything. And then we'll come to you and said, can you just follow us? You follow us. And then we said, this is your car. Ah, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Glory be to God. They started dancing, they started rejoicing. Uh, thank God it's my car. But I don't want to drive. But 
People will start talking about me. <laughs> if you're conscious of the goodness of God, you will not be interested in the foolishness of people. <laughs> Uh, people will start talking about me. They will start. They already start talking about you. They are trekking. Are you not awake? They have been talking that one since. You know, even know self. Let me just report to you. They are talking about you. <laughs> oh, you have one head. Let me make you hear away. They have been talking since. This man can trek. This man can trek. They have been talking since. So now give them something better to talk about. <laughs> eh? This guy now is something what better to talk about. See, keep them busy, but in a different direction. You know, I, I can't drive this car. I, I can't drive this car. I cannot drive it. Kidnappers will kidnap me. You know, there are people, they start having, see, let me say this. Train yourself to enjoy the goodness of God. In his goodness, there is protection and longevity. I say, train yourself to enjoy the goodness of God in his goodness, there is protection and longevity. That was why the psalmist said that goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. So that was just, uh, you know, on my phone, I was just going through something. I just saw a young lady, she's a musician, and she just said, I need a private jet now to keep my schedule. So I said, mm, that's good for you. And that's what I said, mm, that's good for you. Uh, that's good for you. That's what I just said. Yeah, that's good for you. And I said, I can imagine. No. Her schedule is required. Private jets is just a transport. But poor people will begin to attack her. But the rich won't say anything. Because most of the rich have it. That's why as you prosper, change your company. Because if you don't change your company, the point you miss may kill you. How are they going to kill you? They'll kill you with words. I was so happy for her. So thank God. Isn't it? A very young woman. I don't think she's still, you know, that girl is up to 35 years. But she has fame. She said to keep up with her schedule. She needs a private jet. It's a thinking. She may not be born again, but she has a mindset that can host great things. There are many born again people with a mindset of scarcity, a mindset of toiling, a mindset of struggle, and a mindset of poverty. Many born again Christians. It is rare you see born again Christians who are really enjoying life. No matter the church they go to, it's rare. Why? Because most of them have not renewed their mind concerning their identity in Christ Jesus. They have not renewed their mind concerning who they are in Christ. If you don't know who you are in Christ, so how do you lay hold of your inheritance in Christ? It takes identity to connect with inheritance. You cannot connect with your inheritance without first knowing who you are. You need to know who you are before you can connect with your inheritance. The knowledge of your identity is what lays the foundation for the expression of your inheritance. I need to know who I am. A city set on the hill cannot be hid. That's part of your identity. You are the light of the world. That is part of your identity. You need to know this. I am a city set on the hill. I am the light of the world. I am carrying the blessing. Oh, my father. That scripture, First Peter chapter 2, verse, verse 9. First Peter chapter 2, verse 9 said, You are a chosen generation, a real priesthood, a holy nation. A holy nation. His own special people. Come on. Look at the kind of choice of words that God, that the writer was using. His own special people. Have you ever said my own person? My personal person. No, those kind of comments. That's what God is saying here. You are my own personal person. In our today language. Eh? <laughs> Amen. He said, he, said, he said, his own special people that you may proclaim the praise of him 
who called you out of darkness. You have been called out of darkness. So, so if the effect of darkness around you is because your mind has not been renewed to so drop it. Come on. What am I talking to right now? You have, you have been called out of darkness. Poverty is darkness. Depression is darkness. A struggling in life is darkness. He said you have been called out of that place. If that thing is still hanging around you, that means you need to renew your mind to start attracting the knowledge of his will, his goodness and purpose for your life. Look at what happened here. Look at what happened here. Look at what happened here. The knowledge of his goodness. There were people that gave back to them in serious poverty. But they started renewing their mind. And they know there is nothing like average. Is it that you're rich or you're poor? No average. No middle class. Is it that you're upper class or lower class? No middle class. Amen. He said, no... My parents are middle class. <laughs> there is no middle class in the Bible. In the Bible you have rich or poor. That's what you have. That's how God sees them. Is it that the man is rich or the man is poor? There is no fact. If you see the Bible, where they write middle class, don't tell me. No middle class. So don't deceive yourself. Middle class is poverty advanced. <laughs> No middle class. Is it that you're rich? Or you're poor? Is it that the person is blessed? Or he's struggling with life? But there is no middle class. Remove that mentality of middle class. It is the state of federal government of different countries that talk about middle class people, middle, middle income, NRS, and all those kind. That is not the word of God. Don't be deceived. It's not in the Bible. You're either, you're either rich or you're poor. Amen. So he said, who have called us out of darkness into marvelous light. Now, let's look at Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3. I'm not going to rush this series because the Holy Ghost told me to stay with it. I'll come back here on Sunday to teach about strong faith. Ephesians 1, verse 3. Ephesians 1, verse 3. He said, blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us. Hey, who has blessed us. I'm carrying the blessing. Doors will open for me and on their own accord. I'm carrying the blessing. I need to talk that to myself. Fitman, hey, hey, you're carrying the blessing. Fitman, come on. Be conscious of this fact. You are carrying the blessing. The blessing is on you. And because the blessing is on you, nothing can be impossible to you. You are carrying the... There is a mentality of the blessing. There is a lifestyle of the blessing. The blessing is a supernatural empowerment by the Spirit of God that comes upon people to enable them to excel far beyond their natural abilities or capacity. The blessing is a supernatural empowerment that enables a person to excel far beyond he or her natural ability or capacity. The blessing is an empowerment. Why do you think that when the man called Isaac wants to go home to be with the Lord, he said to his son Esau, get me something to eat. And Rebecca heard it and told Jacob, they do their, all their family runs. Look at family matter. <laughs> that thing was happening is family. Inside family. He said, Rebecca said, I'm just speaking her heart. I've noticed that those who have the blessing controls the nation. I've lived with your father and I saw how he prospered and it was the blessing. Jacob, listen to this. We must get the blessing. Don't bother about this goat and this cow that is here. Don't bother about the yam and the, uh, the land. Don't, don't drag anything with Esau. Just get the blessing. The blessing will produce everything. <laughs> the things you're looking for is already in the blessing. The husband is in the blessing. 
Children are in the blessing. Business is in the blessing. Wealth, abundance, and prosperity is in the blessing. Can I say this to you? If you don't have the revelation of the blessing, you cannot have the manifestation or the expression of the goodness of God around you. You need to have the revelation of the blessing. I am wearing the blessing. I am carrying the blessing. I am living in the blessing. This is part of your identity. If you're going to have a strong faith, you must know that you're blessed. You are not blessed because of what people said. You are blessed because you accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And from that day, you have the blessing. But for you to have what we call the expression, manifestation, or demonstration of the blessing, you need to begin to walk in the light of the realities of redemption. Walking in the light of the realities of what? Of redemption. You are blessed. You are not an ordinary person. You need to have the mentality of the blessing for your situation to change. If you don't have the mentality of the blessing, the struggle will continue. The reason for the struggle most of the time is that people don't have the mentality of the blessing. It's hustling, hustle. Have you seen people they struggle? They do. The more they hustle, the more the money they run. The more they work hard, the more the money they run. But somebody just sitting down, or maybe an instruction, or maybe working somewhere or something. Things are just happening. The revelation of the blessing puts you to put you in a position of rest. I said the revelation knowledge of the blessing puts you in a position of rest where you operate from the inheritance I need to know that I'm carrying the blessing I need to know that that I am carrying the blessing things will work in my hands I am carrying the blessing I am born to prosper I am carrying the blessing the blessing is upon me one day, Pastor C told me, it's not your fault that God is blessing you. <laughs> you know, my pastor coming forward sometimes. He says, it's not your fault that God is blessing you. Man, I became conscious of the blessing. I'm carrying the blessing. I refuse to be needy. Everywhere I go, I want to be a blessing. I want to so much see. I want to be a blessing. I want to be a blessing. I have a problem with somebody tomorrow. I'm thinking, what would I give to him? What, 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 what can I give to them? You know, the, there is a blessing mindset. There is, it's not a needy mindset. It's a mindset of the spirit that is consistent with the, with the word of God. You need to have this mentality that I am blessed. If you don't carry yourself that way, the toiling, the struggle, hardship, hard labor continues. The blessing helps you to operate from a place called rest. There is a place called rest. There is rest though. Some children, you know, there is this word in our society that they call it hustle. Somebody said, may, may God bless you also. I hate that word. Eh? I hate that word also. Also. Um, may God bless your hustle. We are hustling. Papa, bless my hustle this year. Go for bid. Go for bid. Go for bid. I reject it. I reject that word also. I reject it for you too. If you are a member of this church, and you always, for those who didn't come to church, that are used to the word how, Pastor, no, with the hustle now. No, don't hustle. Walk from the blessing. Walk from the blessing. Walk from where? Walk from the blessing. Don't have a hustle mindset. Don't have a struggle mindset. It's a mindset too. You can have the mindset of toiling. Luke Gospel chapter 5. Paul Peter said, We have toiled all night. They have the skill. They have the net. The sea was there, but they came back with empty nets. And that is what is happening to so many people in life. They are going out, but they are coming back empty. Because they think it's by might. Second Corinthians 9 verse 8. God is able to make all grace abound towards you that you are always doing what? Having. There, is a, there are churches that are massive, mega, but the pastor have a toilet mindset. It's like a struggle. Ah, they always struggle. You know, there is this mindset. If you are not careful, even if when you begin to prosper, they, that spirit of hustling, struggling, is not of God. God didn't call you to toil. He called you to live in the blessing. 
I said, God didn't call you to a toy. He called you to live in the blessing. You have to walk from the blessing. I said, what? You have to walk. If you're going to walk, if you're going to do business, if you're going to do ministry, it must be from the blessing. The business must operate from the blessing. The marriage must operate from the blessing. The career must operate from the blessing. If it does not operate from the blessing, there is no proper spiritual nutrient that will make it grow and flourish and prosper. Why? The blessing is the nutrient of life. The blessing. The blessing. There is the blessing. Hallelujah. <laughs> there is the blessing. Church, there is what they call the blessing. That's what they call the blessing. There's a preacher. It's, it's one of the preachers that I like to listen to a lot. It's in the UX. And, uh, and he's so blessed. Oh, God. So blessed. So blessed. I wonder what just when I say, God, you know, there is how you do these things. So blessed. God didn't call us to sweat. We're not going to eat from our sweats. We're going to eat from the blessing. Did you hear what I said? Huh? You know some people said, hey, now my sweats, which sweats? Sweat is not in the covenant. The blessing is, bros, it's not by sweat. There are people sweating it out. <laughs> like Pastor Gertrude tell me. <laughs> they, are, they are sweating it out, but it's not working. Then they sweat them out. It is good to work hard. But hard work without the knowledge of the blessing. The blessing is the spiritual force that makes the things God asks you to do to prosper. Hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. The blessing is the spiritual force that makes the things that God asks you to do to prosper. The blessing is the spiritual force that makes the things that God asks you to do to prosper. The blessing is that spiritual force that makes it to prosper. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I have a friend and this is my very nice guy. This guy has been faithful, has been in ministry for years, very faithful. I wonder we'll finish talking. Because he had a guest who were talking about ministry. And I want, to, I want to leave. And he said, let him walk me down to my car. And he said, Apostle, do you know, I want to be sincere to you. We're friends. I want to be sincere to you. I've been preaching for years upon years and upon years. But Apostle, I've never seen one millionaire before. I said, what? I just... I don't know when I slapped in hand. I said, what? He said, what? He said, I'm telling you the truth. As my friend, I have never seen one million. <sighs> Let me share something. Prosperity begins with the light of what Jesus has already done. That's the first thing. Prosperity begins with the light of what Jesus have what have already done. Amen. <laughs> Number two, the manifestation of prosperity begins with a way of thinking that hosts God's goodness. The manifestation of prosperity begins with a way of thinking that can host the goodness of God. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. We we'll said some powerful things. Prosperity begins with a way of thinking that can host the goodness of God. You see, there is a thinking that the pastor is looking at the size of the church. 
It's a mindset too. Huh? How many people in this church are millionaires? Now, the number of millionaires will determine the number of projects they will do. Or the offering in the church will determine what they can do. But I learned something. Five loaves and two small fish is a resources where there is a mentality of the blessing. Hmm. I said, five loaves and two small fish is a resources where there is a what? A mentality of the blessing. Five loaves and two small fish is a resources where there is a mentality of the blessing. If there is no mentality of the blessing, five loaves and two small fish will bring depression to the preacher. How are you going to take care of 5,000 people with five loaves? Sister, it will come to your house with all those your boys, them, including me. And we are now come. Everybody said the one chop. Five loaves with all that. Uh, you said, say, uh, I'm take easy now. Five loaves and two small fish. Look at the crowd. The crowd that was there. 5,000 and above was in that meeting. It was the mentality of the blessing that unlocked the multiplication principle. The mentality of the blessing. The reason what is called the mentality of the blessing. All you have was 5,000 naira. And God spoke to you, so 4,000. I beg God forbid. Don't begin to talk. They said they won't walk in the blessing. Now the instruction don't come, fight don't start. Now then come tell us, say they won't <laughs> see prosperity. Prosperity come by instructions. And those instructions require obedience to find through expression. Prosperity comes by instructions. There's instructions that they want to have true expression, but prosperity comes by instruction. God will give an instruction. Jesus tell them, make them sit. A man with just five loaves and two small fish I have a vision. And that vision made me to start following some handles online just to see what they're doing. Some people have done their own for 50 years or 40 years. I, just, I was just studying them, looking at how they're doing it. I said, okay, I'm coming. I'm coming. Plant the seed of your future in your heart. And then nurse it with understanding and wisdom. And it will grow to be your harvest. <laughs> Plant the seed that chamber you won't get. Plant it. That you can buy a building. The entire building. Now your chamber. And you have different lawyers working for you. You need to first have it inside. You need to shift. From not the job you're doing now. And start seeing that. Because anything you don't plant inside of you. You can't bring out of you. You have to plant it right inside of you. And it takes God's word to plant the right seeds in your heart. There is a billionaire mindset. There is a trillionaire mindset. There is a millionaire mindset. I don't know the mindset you want to endorse. Praise God. So Ephesians 1 verse 3 said... God has blessed us. We're talking about how to have strong faith. So when you are moving, have this mindset, I'm blessed. Remember every time you're depressed, some people cannot laugh. They cannot laugh. They cannot play. Every time their face is hard. No joy. No laughter. They are, the spirit of depression opens the door for suicide. One spirit you got to be careful with is called the spirit of depression. Depression, depression is the major reason why most people are having high BP right now. Depression, 
Where does depression come from? Lost of hope. When people lose hope, it opens door for depression. No matter what you face, never be depressed. Try as much as you can to work yourself happy. Try. It's not easy sometimes, I understand. Try. I know you have challenges, but try as much as you can to me. What will make me happy now? What will make me now rejoice? Now, count your blessings. Open your wardrobe. For some of you that have wardrobe, open your wardrobe. Look, I have five shoes, three bags. Just be counting the shoes. Then you go and count your bags. Enter your kitchen. For some of you that have private kitchen, count your pots. <laughs> Pastor, what are you talking about? Go and check where you keep your water. Open your fridge. Even if there is no water in it, wave the fridge. <laughs> Count your blessing. Amen. <laughs> For some of you that have cars, just go outside. Look at the cars. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Come on. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> and look for something that stirs up your joy. Because depression is a spirit. Believe me. Look at your children. Those beautiful children God has given to you. Thank God for them. Find something that will stir you up. Depression is a spirit. And depression kills dreams. Nothing kills dreams like depression. Depression leads to people isolating themselves from relationship and people that will help them make progress. The purpose of the spirit of depression is to separate you from people that will stand with you and by then they will have time to kill you. To kill the person. That, that is the mission of spirit of depression. And when people are depressed, they start having memory issue. Most of people having memory loss is connected to depression. Somebody go talk to someone and say, hey, what have you been talking again? I know where you were. In the deal. I know where you were. Something they happen. No? Most of the mental illness, that's how it starts. That's how it starts. When people are having memory issues, because depression is a spirit. Depression comes from people losing hope. One of the keys to unlocking your hope is to read God's words yourself. Read it loud. God love me. God love me. God love me. God love me. And because I love me, I go down. So God, even if your voice is not good, sing that well for yourself. And drown. You sing that yourself. You start dancing inside the room. God love me. Just do something. Just do something. God love me. Because life is telling you no hope. People around you, the attitude is telling you no hope. The things around you is telling you no hope. Your bills are increasing. Landlord just come and increase rents. The school where children are going, they just come and increase school fees. You just want to the market, they just increase the goose. The goose that was 100, they say it's 300 naira. Mother, if you not buy liver. Ah, Abba. <laughs> I must dance. <laughs> I must do what I must do. The joy of the Lord is what is my strength. The joy of the Lord. I carry the spirit of joy. <laughs> Man, there are things you need to laugh away. Amen. You just need to laugh them out. Because depression affects your ability to reason. Depression opens door for compromise. Sometimes people make decisions that leads to setback was because they were battling with depression. And some people say, hey, Hassan, how are you? I'm fine. What's the problem? No problem. Ah. Uh, what is going on? Nothing. Nothing. How are you feeling? Nothing. I'm good. <laughs> Start praying for them. <laughs> Stop praying because there is a problem. There is a problem, church. There is a what? A problem. Now, one of my sons is in the US. I love him so much. Once I have an issue, just call him apostle. This is what I'm loving. I said, Don't worry, my son. Don't worry. Don't worry. I'll find ways to fix that matter. There's a problem. One of the greatest gifts you have in life is to have somebody to share your pain with. Somebody you can look up to and say, that you can confide and say, My head, they pay me since yesterday. That will not go and share it on Facebook or that will not go and share it on Twitter. Amen. Because there are people their mouth is running like fire. So that's not what you want. You want to solve your problem, don't create more problems for yourself. Can I hear a better amen? So stay away from depression. Just look for something that will make you happy. Amen. Look for something that will make you happy. Rejoice. You know, sometimes people are pursuing their dream, but it looks like the dream is not making progress. 
They have confessed. They have sown seed. They have done everything. But it's like it's standing still. When it's standing still, don't look at what is stand, that standing still you're saying. Be looking at what God's word has said. One thing that kept me going was what God said. I'm not bothered myself about what people think about me. You know, concern me. I'm just saying what God told me. He told me that faith man, you're going to go great places. He told me I'm going to do big things. So that is my comfort. He said, prophecy is for edification, for comfort, and for exaltation. So what God told me, I'm using to comfort myself. Amen. Sometimes I go back to the book of prophecy, the things God has spoken to me about my life. Sometimes you're dealing with issues. Go back to the things God told you. Go back to some prophetic word. Read them to yourself. You don't feel it. You don't have to feel it. Just believe it. Instead of at night, you're sitting down, you start crying. Stop crying. This night cry will not pay your bills. This night cry won't change anything. Cry from now to tomorrow. Nothing will change. Just begin to take step towards redeeming your destiny. And how do you take that step? By speaking the word of God. How do you take the step? By speaking the word of God. I will read one of the, this last scripture and then we're going to close Second Peter. Oh, thank you, Holy Spirit. Second Peter chapter 1. In 2 Peter chapter 1, I want to read verse 2 and 3. 2 Peter, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 2 and 3. It says, Grace and peace be multiplied to you. What should be multiplied to you? Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Grace and peace. One of the things you need to multiply in your life is grace and peace. There are people that are not peaceful. They look at life. Nothing has worked for me before. Nothing has happened for me. There are people, they are, full, they, they, are, they are full of negative experiences. But, but let me tell you this. One of the ways you come out from negative experience or every negative experience you've ever experienced. Number one, if you are born again right now, begin to thank God for the gift of salvation. You thank God for the gift of salvation. Start taking your eyes off your mistakes. Whatever mistake you have made, it doesn't matter. Take your eyes off it. You know why? If you continue to live in your past, even God can help you. He said, lay aside every weight that easily besets you because he wants you to go forward. So he says, you lay it aside. You're thinking about what happened, you know. You're thinking about this. That there, are, there are things that have happened to us as human beings that we can feel it. I can feel it. Like when I lost my brother last year, I felt it. I still feel it. But I have to begin to talk myself out of that. Because it's one person that will call me and we can stay on phone for one hour. We'll be just and we'll be laughing. So I miss that. I miss that. But you see, life has to move on for purpose to be achieved, for the living. There are people you may not miss them all. Because in the first place, they were not adding to your life. But if somebody was adding to your life, and you turn and say, ah, if the person been there and I for don't do this, you know, oh, 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 Jesus, oh, Jesus. You know, just know about that. But the people, you don't miss them because in the first place, they were a problem to you. But somebody who is solving a problem, a, maybe, when we talk about solving problems, it's not just giving you money, it's more than money. Somebody who speaks words of encouragement. One of the greatest gifts you can receive in life after receiving Jesus as your Lord and Savior is somebody who speaks encouragement. Who speaks hope? You know, don't worry, to be well. Everything will be fine. You're going great places. Encouragement is an oxygen that inspires your vision for greater heights. Encouragement is the oxygen of your vision. Encouragement is the oxygen. God told Joshua, Joshua 1, verse 6 and 7, be strong and be very courageous. There are relationships I don't want to lose. I can't tell you the truth. I can't tell you. Especially relationships where I find encouragement. We are fine inspiration. We are fine wisdom. If they don't come to me, I'll go to them. You know why? Those relationships are channels for strength. If the enemy wants to mess you up, what he does is, is to begin to crack those channels of strength. 
Relationships are channels of strength. There are people as you meet them for 30 minutes conversation, they have said five things that can help you get better. Just being around them, you feel this courage to live your life. I don't know whether you have met people like that. You just, there is this hope they generate. There is this hope they come with. As you're talking with them, you don't say tomorrow they show. Even if you didn't see them too much, you don't say they date here. So, encouragement is the oxygen of vision. If there is no encouragement, then people will be hopeless. Why is somebody contemplating suicide? I don't tire for life. I don't tire for life. Have you heard some people say, every time, I don't tire for life. I don't tire for life. I don't tire. No, no tire for life. Look at what you do. Start being happy for your life. He said, Pastor, you don't even know my condition, Pastor. You don't even know what I'm going through, Pastor. Pastor, you don't know what I'm passing through. Let me tell you, anything you're going through, once you begin to acknowledge God's ability, it will help you to come out of it. Anything you're going through, the first step is to begin to acknowledge the ability of God. Let's say, for instance, maybe we started this building, this project, and I begin to go. I've never worried about this building. The only time I felt something about this building was when I made one mistake. The mistake was God didn't want me to do that thing, but I went to do it. That was when we started walking here. It wasn't the time for me to start fixing this place. Was str I struggled with it. I struggled. I, I, I said, where is this struggle coming from? He said, tell them to stop that work they're doing there. And as they stopped the thing, the flow just came. The money rushed in. I started doing the things as well. Because we're working by instruction. God never tell you to start the phase of the project. You go to start. Where you go? How you money buy cement? How you money pay your workers? If the project doesn't need uh, 10,000, 20,000. This is not the project of 10,000. These are millions. If you're moving the check, there are millions. 500,000, 1 million, 2 million, 3 million, 4 million, 5 million. You must be moving real money to be able to move things. Know that you're doing one thing, you've done them. Every time God gives us an instruction, it's for our preservation, for our direction, and for our provision. Every time God gives us an instruction, it's for our preservation, it's for to preserve us, it's to direct us, it's to provide for us. So the scripture already has said, Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of our Lord Jesus Christ. Instead of sitting down to worry about life, why not count your blessing? Why not count? Lord, Lord, I just want to thank you. I just want to thank you. I want to thank you, God. You're faithful. God, you're faithful. Lord, I want to thank you. Lord, I want to thank you. You're faithful. Lord, I want to thank you. Also, what are you saying thank you for? Just thank him out of those that proceed thanksgiving. He will multiply. Lord, I want to thank you. I'm thanking you for the friends I have. I'm thanking you for the family I have. Thank you for the children I have. Thank you for the wife I have. Thank you for the mother I have. Thank you for the father. Th look for something to start thanking God for. It's one of the ways you relieve yourself from stress. One of the cures for stress is thanksgiving. I said what? One of the cure for stress is what? Is thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is one of the cure for stress. Are you grateful? Are you thankful? Now the next scripture, that's same Second Peter chapter one verse three. As His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of Him who has called us to glory and virtue, He has given us all things. So I need to walk in this mindset that I have all things. I have all things. God is my source. Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want what makes me to lie down in grace. God is my source. God is my helper. God is going to help me. The funding is coming. Believe God. will trust God. God is going to help me. Amen. God is going to help me. You need to, you need to talk to yourself about that. And can I say this to you? Depression leads to a health crisis. I don't know who I'm addressing their matter right now. I don't know who you are, but God continued to tell me this. Stay away from depression. And how are you going to stay away from depression? Look for things that will make you be grateful. Anytime the enemy is telling you, you have not achieved anything. You have not done anything with your life. You are a Anytime you hear a thought 
that is not aligned with who you are in Christ, point the enemy and tell him, I am the righteousness of God. I am a partake of the divine nature. Christ in me is the hope of glory. Greater is he that is in me. Always look for what God has done. Okay, if he, if he said nothing is happening in your life, okay, look at the church. <laughs> but thank God for discovery now. Eh? God, thank you that this building is going on. Thank you for the next one I want to start. Thank you for my one church. Thank you for the place you want to start in Alu. Thank you for the one I want to start in OGK. Eh? We we'll start thanking God for all those places that we're about to start church. So just look for something to thank God for. Depression frustrates the mind from not reaching its full goal. When people are depressed, they lose their joy. They lose the taste of life. They lose the taste of living. And the reason for the depression is them trying to do only what God can fix. The reason why people are depressed most time is that they are trying to do what only God can fix. There are things you can't fix. There are things you can't change. It has happened. It has happened. You can't change it. You can't change most things that have happened in your past. But you can control today by the mercy of God and negotiate a better future tomorrow for yourself. No matter what mistakes you have made, no matter the struggle you have had, I want you to have a clean slate today. I want you to look at yourself and say, my life is not yet over. This is not the end of the road for me. This is not the end of the road for my life, for my dream, for my children, for my vision. This is not the end of the road. You begin to talk to yourself. You talk to yourself. Tell yourself it's possible. Tell yourself better days are ahead of me. Tell yourself God loves me. Tell yourself I'm walking in greatness. Tell yourself better things are coming. I refuse to carry the garment of heaviness. Come on, drop it. I refuse to carry the garment of sorrow. No way. I refuse to carry the garment of anxiety and frustration. Come on, no way. I refuse to carry the garment of complaining, nagging. I refuse. I refuse. I refuse to wear the garment of remembering all the wrong things they did to me. Ha. Ah. I love what a dear preacher said, a very great man of God in our country said. He was sharing, he said, that all the people that hurted him, that what he does, he will call them by their name and start praying for them. He said, that is how he releases the hurt. He called their name and start praying for them. No matter what has happened, you should get to a point in your life where your past is no longer your voice. You must get to a point in your life what what they did is not as important as where you're going to. Where you're going to should be more important to you than what they did to you. A lot of people are crushed in what happened to them in their past. But they are not engaging their future. Wisdom is the ability to engage today. To engage your future. You look at yourself and tell yourself, my God is a God of restoration. He will restore relationship. If I've lost any relationship that was connected to my destiny, God, you will restore it for me. You begin to pray about it. God, you will restore those covenant, those destiny relationships. You will restore them. Lord, I believe you to restore my relationship in this season. Can I say this to you? Refuse to wear the garment of anxiety, worry, frustration, being toxic. Always want to pick a fight. No, 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 no. That's not who you are. I choose praise over work. I choose the song of victory over the voice of depression. I choose to rejoice of anxiety and the pressures of life. I choose to thank God. Whatever you lost, you will recover. If you lost a loved one and it was born again, you will meet them in heaven. You meet them in heaven. Awaken yourself to the goodness of God. God is a good God. I'm not going to worry about my future. I'm not going to worry about my destiny. I'm not going to worry about my life. God is a good God. I need to tell myself that. Faith man, God is good. God is good to you. 
God is good to you. It doesn't matter how the marriage is looking right now. It doesn't matter how the business is looking right now. I want to say one thing to you. Step out of your pain and start living your life. Step out of your pain. Whatever the pains are, step out of it and say to yourself, can't my life move on without this? You must say that to yourself. Don't continue to live in your pains. Don't continue to live in your regrets. They won't heal you. They won't help you. But they will hurt you more. Look for something that will make you praise him. That's what I'm doing constantly. I say, God, I thank you for this. God, I thank you for this. God, I thank you for this. Oh, God, I thank you for this. I was reading a scripture today in Philippians. It said, nothing should be done out of strife or vain glory. Lord, I thank you. I'm not going to strive with nobody. I'm going to please you, Father. Come on. I thank you for the Lord. I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Lord, thank you. You went home tonight. It's water you have to drink. Just drink it with joy, I beg you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I give you praise. Look at your life. Some of you here, God has blessed you with good health. There is somebody right now going for kidney transplant. Was it not a man in this country? Because of the health of our daughter to get kidney. Now he's in prison. To serve for close to 10 years. Do you know what that would do to his political career? Already damaged. To take grace for him to rise again. In trying to help his own child. But he's see, Can I say this to you church? Why we round up tonight? I just want you to think about this. Ask yourself this question. If I was to go home to be with the Lord today. Will I spend all my time worrying about today? Will I spend all my time worrying about what I don't have? What I've not achieved? Where I've not been? Is it what I'm going to do to myself? I refuse to worry. Lord, I give you praise. Look for reasons to give him thanks. And as we thank him this evening, the spirit of praise will come upon us. Let's rise. Somebody thinking how to develop a strong faith. This is the part one. We'll come back on Sunday, first service and second. Saturday is prayer camp meeting. Okay, in the camp meeting, I will take it. Yes, yes, yes. In the prayer camp meeting, I will take this message. Yes, Makuri Baba Baba. I want you to begin to thank God right now. Thank Him. Thank Him. Thank Him for how He has helped you. Thank Him for how He has come through for you. Thank him for the things he did for you. Thank him. Thank him. Refuse to walk in worry. Refuse to walk in anxiety. Refuse to walk in depression. Refuse. God has helped you. Look at your life. Look at the areas where God has come through. Look at the areas where God has showed up in your life. Look at the things God have done. Become goodness of God minded. God has been good to me. Lord, you have been good even when I don't feel it. God is sending you a helper for that vision. He's sending you a helper. Begin to use your faith to receive help. I receive help in the name of Jesus. Lord, I receive help. Help for my dreams. Help for my vision. I receive help. Maybe you're running a business here. Maybe you're doing something and you say, Lord, help me. Help is coming. Help is coming. Don't lose your mind. Some things take time to work. Some things take time before they happen. It takes time to build big businesses. Great ministries. It takes time to build things you want to see. It takes time. It takes time. Don't give up. Don't quit. Don't walk away. Don't sound tired. Don't say there is no hope. Don't say this is the end of the road. Receive mercy. Receive mercy. Receive strength. Receive wisdom. Receive understanding. Receive insight. To overcome hurt. To overcome bitterness. To overcome rage. To overcome revenge. To overcome 
any mentality that is not consistent with the will of God receive strength receive understanding to walk into your future don't let the things that has happened to you change you from who you are you are a sweet person you are a good person you are a nice person don't allow the side talk to change your true image don't become like them because of what they have done to you no remain who you are God was saying to the people that will connect with it don't quit on your life don't quit on your dream don't quit on your vision better days are ahead of you better days better days in one minute let's pray for our prayer camp meeting that is going to take place on Saturday they will be here from 6 a.m. in the morning till 6 p.m. for 12 hours praying word and worship we'll do it every month I want us to pray for the prayer camp meeting that God will visit us in this prayer camp meeting. We'll remember the two prayer camp meetings we had. How people started having favor, having houses. People started having things, businesses, you know. I want us to pray for the one coming up on Saturday. This Saturday will be your day of encounter. I don't want you to miss it for anything. I want you to pray for the prayer camp meeting that is coming up on Saturday. That God will minister to you. Kanda Baba, you're coming with your notes. You're coming to receive from God. One word from God will change your story. People build mega business by spending time in God's presence. There is answer. Lord will commit the prayer camp meeting into your hand. We'll pray for the release of your spirit. We'll pray for manifestation. Thank you, Holy Spirit, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you tonight. Thank you for showing up here. Thank you for the things you do and how you do them. Thank you for how you have prospered us. Thank you for how you have protected us. Thank you for how you have kept us. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for coming through, sir. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for every family represented here. Thank you for your hand of mercy upon them. Lord, we'll give you praise. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Quickly, we're going to...